You have a certain moment to write something and let it come out of you, and it's fleeting. It just, it always is, no matter where you are in your life, you can't go back. That film was something that came out of me that I, I couldn't do that again. To step outside of something that was so plot driven or so traditionally driven and let the kind of, you know, how do you deal with the drifter who's the center of your story? Your story inevitably will drift and you've either got to kind of take it like a man and hope an audience goes with it or, or not. My first job is to be a really good writer. To the, to the actors, to not describe it in, in the script. So, much, so many times you see so much description of what the character is supposed to be feeling and stuff in, in screenplays, and it's just a big mistake. It has to be done through dialogue and, and, and what they do. W what are they going to do? Are they going to walk across the street? You know, Then that is a, a character trait. They're making that decision. And so the, the, the scripts that I write for them are very clean. They're sort of very clean of a lot of sort of flowery explanation of what they're supposed to be feeling. I think the actors really appreciate that. It, it lets them do their job. It enables them to just act. I, I don't have a job as, as a director to the actors. I, I, that's my theory, is that my job to them is as a writer. It's like, write them a good part, do my job there, and that's, then I will, I, I will have done my job. As a director, it's just like keeping your sense of humor and every once in a while reminding them to keep it simple. The good ones get it and just cast the right one, and then it's about putting the camera in the right place and accommodating how hard acting is with all the technical constraints of making a movie, you know what I mean? It's just being really sensitive to that. Like, yeah, it's hard to act. It's even harder when there's a camera and you gotta stop and start and stop and start and piecing up this sort of emotional flow and because of the way it works making a movie, you know? It's about sort of being a good dad and just making sure they conserve their energy. It's not even like me as a director. It's like I'm there just to be the guy who's, who's just maybe kind of fun to hang out with. The script is the director. It really was just doing that. It was just showing up to do the script. That's the way we all approached it. And Paul is He's so funny, and that was something I wasn't expecting. He's got a great sense of humor. Really just allows for you to take time on screen, which can be very sort of unnerving at times. He'll just keep the camera rolling and let you find it, and, and it's, it's really, it's very wonderful. I make shot lists. I mean, a lot of it is pretty well planned out beforehand. A lot of it, actually. Just because it's that much easier then to get there and be more open to stuff. You know, as opposed to trying to figure it out, and then you just, you're never gonna figure it out. So I make shot lists beforehand. I mean, a lot of the, cam like, the, 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 more sp the most specific camera moves are written into the script. If they're in, in aid of storytelling, do you know what I mean? Or in they're in aid of letting the studio know, don't panic when this comes in in dailies and it's four minutes long, you know, making sure it's in the script. So it's like really making a note of it. This is going to be one long shot. And also, too, if the actors are reading the script and preparing and they know, you know, if they haven't talked to me just whatever in the course of a day, they know the next day is going to be, oh, it's one of those big one long shot deals. And then they can sort of gear up for it that way. We were shooting these 65 millimeter cameras and we were supposed to do a scene and the cameras broke. So we kind of found ourselves with about three or four hours while those cameras were getting fixed where we could shoot with this other smaller camera, regular traditional 35 millimeter camera. And Amy was around that day and it was a kind of a great situation where we were shooting, which is this kind of island called Mare Island, where basically all our locations were in about a one or two block radius so we could we had a lot of freedom to do whatever came up Paul very much would sort of come he just say hey come to set I want you to, to do something like the um, in the film the exercise that I do is um, what, what color are my eyes and he just had me look in camera and basically ask different questions as he called them out it wasn't something that I had a lot of time to put a lot of thought into. He was telling me in the moment what to say. So it's a great exercise in staying focused and staying in character. It's almost like hypnosis. That I felt like I was hypnotized by the process of doing it, staring into camera and repeating these questions. And, and that's what, it, what struck me when I was participating. There are a couple times I appear on screen, and, and those weren't scripted. Those were, um, those were in Paul's imaginings in the moment. What I try to do is go to the set and try to kind of like pretend like you've never had an idea in your life about it and just to see if the actors kind of come up with something or, or let them do it first and 
That said, there's so many things that I didn't imagine about it that came together, that that ri that, that that rose to the top. But the beginning was always the beginning, the middle was the middle, and the end was always the end. You know, all these details in between are definitely different, and there's all kinds of nuances and things that I never could have imagined and never wanted to imagine. Wanted to set up a situation to find those things. Sure. I certainly never thought I'd look at Joaquin standing like that. <laughs> that that like I said before, you know, that was never in my mind's eye. That's such a predominant part of the film. You know, I wrote the, be the the first scene of the movie was written as like exterior beach Guam. You know, Freddie Quell is on the beach after VJ Day. That's all I wrote because we just wanted to go to a beach and start doing things. Well, can let me know that he actually his shoulder is kind of a, been a bit. Of, I think a, from birth he's got a kind of a messy shoulder, and, and he's probably spent a lot of time trying to hide it or stand up straight so that if he kind of can twist his body around and. He sort of said, do you think it'd be all right if I do this? And I said, sure, great. And But a couple of days into the film, he just sort of was feeling more comfortable and just kept sliding into the skin that he was doing, that kind of, this movements that were so incredible. I didn't, I just didn't want to jinx anything and say, what are you doing or what's going on? You know, it's kind of, you're in the middle of make-believe. You don't want to break the spell. You're just going to want to watch him do whatever he's doing. And I kind of have my own theories about it because you know, he puts his hands on his hips and sort of stuff about his kidneys being all torn up from the war. Maybe something happened. Maybe it, maybe it's just easier. Maybe it's comfortable for him to kind of reach back and hold his kidneys and help him stand. The way somebody holds himself is an extension of, of what's going on with them on the inside. One look in his face, you think, I don't, I don't know what he's seen, but it doesn't look good. Like it was, it was one of those characters where the more questions I had, the more uncertain I was about things, the better it was. Uh, you get to a, a solid place with them, you have a certain understanding. Freddie, it seemed like the, the, the less I understood, less I understood, because I don't think that he understood. And then I think that when I just stopped worrying about the answer, it, it, I started finding it. He just has no idea what he's doing, and it's just this animal that's walked into where there's a bunch of movie cameras that happen to be on. and. It's the highest compliment of acting. I mean, it's, it's, it would be a mistake to think that he is not in complete command of himself and, and these ideas. He's a, a, an incredibly inventive actor and incredibly instinctual and unpredictable. But he's also very intelligent, too. So usually those things don't, don't mix together. You know, you usually don't get that combination. Sometimes you get intelligent actors that are very cold and can't be instinctual. But Joaquin, I think, enjoys flirting with danger, enjoys getting very close to dangerous situations. I talked about with Joaquin, which relates to this kind of stuff, is that not only was there trauma that these guys had come back with, but having a sense of a master or a commander that you respected and that you liked, who you could look up to, and a sense of schedule uh, in your life was what suddenly, like, the, the rug was pulled out from underneath you, and, and you were expected to kind of make your way without, without that. And, 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 and that alone was difficult, not to discount all the kind of images that might be floating around in your head from what you've seen and what you've gone through. But that kind of structure and that kind of discipline that can be so helpful to people's lives was, was, was missing. There's something about the character that Phil plays that's a little bit unknowable. It's yeah. somebody who's kind of proposing to have the secrets of the universe, so he's kind of hard to get to know. And maybe that rubs in with the film. You know, it wasn't, I didn't really, never really looked at it like a guy who was ahead of a cult or ahead of a religion even. I, 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 I was a movement in my mind, you know. It was a, <laughs> a very successful movement, you know. And I think, and I think that is what it is. And I think what it is is that the film kind of gets it right at the point where it's starting to go bad. You know, something start, something starting to twist in a way, and and it might be t might be turning into a call, might be turning into <laughs> a more than just a movement. But at the time when you meet him, he really is the head of something that's working that people are excited by. You know, and therefore you have Joaquin walk in there too, and and he is taken in by that too because he is affected by what he's doing. And you actually see that in the movie. You actually see that happen, uh, which is one of the great, great moments of the film. You actually see what the guy can do and what he does with Joaquin and how it's a transformative moment for both of them. Sooner or later, if something you're doing like that grows, perhaps it kind of turns into an industry or something bigger than just a kind of hands-on approach to helping people. For the guy that we have in our film, his wrestle with that and his navigation of that perhaps isn't as, as graceful as it should be. But that's what he's dealing with, is how to kind of navigate 
this kind of homegrown self-help thing into something bigger which obviously everybody has ambition everybody wants to succeed with what they're doing our character wants to help people but what happens when that translates into a, a sea of people looking at you hoping that you will not just ask them good questions but provide them with answers if i don't allow people to somehow identify with the worst inside themselves they never have a chance at actually walking out with that person in their heart as i identify with them whether you get all the answers or not it shouldn't quite matter you know um, what are the details of how this happened don't really matter you know but here we are and by the end of the film nobody really has an epiphany or kind of goes to, okay. they go through a lot but they don't really get to something that they figure out they kind of they start the same and they end the same. I would hate to actually think that you make a film that people like and does well and suddenly they're gonna go, okay, now you can do whatever you want. You need something to push back against, I think, I suppose. Or I do, at least. Maybe it's a horrible habit in me, but it's nice to feel that you are still have something to prove and mm -hmm. have to work. And he'll overload his films in a way with it, where it's just, I think that's Paul. I think he's an overloaded individual, it makes him such an amazing person. He's just, what's happening in his head is way too much for any person to bear. And you kind of see him and you get to know him like that. And you see his films do that too, but it is in search of how can I just be like drawing a character or a narrative in such a way that is so brutally honest in a way that you thought, oh God, I never would have put it that way, but that's it. Do you mm -hmm. know, when you're living your life and all of a sudden you come across it in a book in such a way that you're relieved that somebody actually got it done on paper. All to myself alone.